And quite frankly, you know, I can do without the job of treasurer, without uh, it being any great uh, problem for me. But it does have historically many responsibilities. Right now, the treasurer's office is quite different from what it may have been a long time ago. There is a collection obligation of approximately $9 million in a year for sewer and trash. But getting out the bills, and two people basically work on that, is only the beginning. If you don't get the money back, then you've wasted your time. And collection is a major effort by my office. We work at it very, very diligently. And this may seem strange, but collection is almost 100%. Now that doesn't mean that we collect from everybody, but when you add penalties and liens and so on, uh, we get most of the money in. And while we do that though, we're still willing to work with citizens that have problems. Uh, Mr. Lundy has mentioned the uh, police and fire. Uh, both of those funds are under the direction of the treasurer by statute. The job, however, is probably not a bean counting job, as some would indicate. It's an administrative position. I supervise eight people, six of them in the union, and when you talk about taking someone from the staff to do what I do, you could do that, but you first would probably have the problem of getting them out of the union. And how much raise are you going to give them? Uh, I've done some of the numbers, and I don't see where there is any savings whatsoever when you cut through all the things, and you would be doing away with the position that reaches back to when our first charter came about, I believe, and which is consistent in most states of the cities of this state. Not all. Uh, Mr. Elmore again gave an example of Collinsville as not having a treasure. Well, Collinsville doesn't even have the same kind of government. That's a city manager form. And Mr. Lundy did mention the uh, separation of powers. Uh, the present mayor and I get along well, but he doesn't tell me who to collect from and who not to and how to do that job. Now he wouldn't, but some mayors might. And the treasurer has the, I get calls, particularly with as hot as it's been, and many people are watering grass and so on, and that water is not going necessarily into the sewer. I get a lot of calls that uh, if I don't give them the answer they want, they say, who's your boss? And I say, well, I really don't have one other than the people of Belleville. Well, I'll call the mayor. I said, go for it. But when it's all said and done, the decision that I render will be the one that prevails. So, uh, I think it was Goldwater that once said, extremism is no vice when you're trying to defend your job. Well, I, I'm just defending the position and uh, I think it would be a mistake to eliminate it. And further, I don't think it needs a CPA running it either. We already have that. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? I'd like to at least, uh, I hope I, Mr. Chairman, respectfully reserve the right to answer any questions that may come up during the discussion, but I feel that uh, uh, I just wanted to present it this session to offer some of the beginning. Uh, Joe Hayden, 1014 West Washington Street, Belle, Illinois, Auburn Ward 5. And I am the one that uh, basically presented this to the City Council. Um, I initially uh, brought this uh, concern to the Mayor's office uh, back in July 6th. Um, it was followed up uh, with another uh, email request on July 19th, and then another memo request on July 30th, just for the record. Also for the record, uh, uh, I believe I was the only one that voted uh, 
there was 15 that voted to keep 16 off, and uh, Mr. Turner, I voted no. I'm not saying the mistake. <laughs> but that's, that's irrelevant for this discussion. Uh, I want to state for the record, uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I don't necessarily degree, disagree with anything that's been brought up uh, by Mr. Turner or Mr. Lundy, both people that I've known uh, and have uh, a lot of respect for. The reason that I have placed this uh, before this uh, committee uh, through the mayor is the fact that, uh, and it's no secret here, Mr. Elmore is running for mayor. Mr. Uh, Eckert apparently is mayor, he's running for mayor. I am uh, already announced my candidacy for mayor. And when Mr. Elmore presented this, it was presented as a platform position, and it was quoted in the B&D, and the B&D is here, that uh, if uh, our party, take it in, and Mr. Hart is here, and I got a lot of respect for, for Mr. Hart, who's the treasure candidate that if uh, I'm elected, or we're elected, that we will be the last treasurer. And it was stated in that process that it would take four years to do so, and that it would be done the way, basically, a city council uh, vote. Now, we last night voted in the Finance Committee to recommend to put on a November ballot. My understanding is we can have up to three referendums, this aggregation, electrical issue. This was uh, already voted on the people. Uh, bad uh, advertising by the company or whatever, it was voted down by the people two to one. We also have in a November ballot, Mr. Chairman, uh, which I voted for, the uh, gambling issue. But now we're talking about, in, in election time, the city treasurer position becoming a, a point of political debate of what is the validity of it, should we keep it, should we not keep it? And in concurring with Mr. Uh, Lundy and, and Mr. Turner, I do believe that the elected position is a basis of checks and balance on the uh, system of government, which I've studied uh, uh, quite a bit. And out of the three things mentioned tonight, illegal, the, the, the legalizing gambling, the uh, uh, aggregation with the electrical bill, or the city treasurer position, if any one of those three should be a vote by the people, that's the one that should be. And that is why that is here this evening. I don't think it is proper to allow us to go into an election with the city treasurer position with that becoming the emphasis of the campaign versus the qualifications. And I will disagree with you, Mr. Turner. I, I, I think uh, uh, qualifications within the position and, and, and being an accountant and being a certified uh, public accountant in that position certainly uh, brings uh, credentials to it, but you and I have agreed to disagree on things before. And I believe strongly that instead of having a campaign based on who we're going to elect as treasurer and should this position be there or not be there, Let's take it to the people in November and say, do you want the position or do you not want the position? If the people vote to maintain it, then we know what the people want and we move on to who is the best candidate. If the people vote no, they don't want it, then it's over and we need to work on changing our system of government. Now, Mayor, you have mentioned that uh, you have an issue with it uh, not having a public hearing. Well, we, we, we voted on something last night that didn't have a public hearing. And I have uh, suggested and, and offered that uh, through this process, between now and two weeks before the general election in November, that we can hold three public hearings. 
one here at City Hall, one on the west end of Belleville, preferably maybe at uh, Belleville Township High School West, one on the east end of Belleville, Belleville Township High School East. There's plenty of time, Your Honor, to, to hold public and informational hearings on the merits of the position and allow Mr. Turner, Mr. Lundy, and anybody else to speak pro or con against it. As a matter of fact, I would like to see more public information in public hearings on the other two issues that we've got before the people instead of the ones we've done. And I think that that's something that should be considered by the administration. But that is why this issue is before us. If we're going to discuss the, the city treasurer position, it should be done in a way of who is the best qualified for the position, not in a situation of elect me and then I'm going to get rid of it. And that's why I bring it to your, this committee tonight. And I thank you. Okay, thank you. Anyone else to uh, speak tonight as the guest? Okay, we'll move forward the, with the agenda. Uh, I'd like to uh, approve the minutes from last meeting. So moved. Oh, okay, we have a motion by Dave. Second. And a second by Ken. Ken? I have a clarification I'd like to add. Okay. On page five of six, the second paragraph under item C, uh, and we can talk, of course, Ken saw Melinda and they uh, sorry. Uh, Melinda Hall asked to increase the number of dogs to be tethered. If we could put the word individually at the same site, it would increase the idea that right. they would be on the same tether. And I think that would be a clarification that would help, although it does mention later on that they can't be on one tether say tether together gives you the idea that they can all be on one. Uh, would you I miss my I'm sorry she left the shirt then. <laughs> hey uh, corrections noted. I have a correction. Sure. On page four of six it um, starts out there and it says that he is fortunately did miss the crime free housing but then you go to the next page where the mayor will bring the list I asked to be on the task force, and it's not printed in there. Okay, you want to add it uh, to the where? Well, then it starts. The mayor will bring the list, but before he said he would, before the list was brought forward, he said that's when I said I raised my hand and I said I would like to be on the task force. Okay, where about some of the pages that? Uh, well, it would be the probably Chief Clay comes to the first meeting and makes a presentation to the task force on all the research he has done and such. Then my line should be before the mayor will bring the list because he said he had it into consideration. Well, I'm sorry, I didn't okay. catch up where you are. Where, you got it? No. What paragraph? Where, what paragraph is it? First section? On page five of six, it should be in just before the mayor will bring the list. Okay. So you want to add, uh, uh, Two corrections to the minutes from last time. Any further comments on the 
discussion of the minutes? Okay, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye to aye. the aye. And opposed? None. On to the uh, major subject here, discussion of Alderman Hayden's request to discuss if the city should retain the position of treasurer and clarification on who will assume the current duties of the treasurer. It's open for discussion. I would like to ask why this has become an issue have we had a lot of residents ask us questions about this, or, or why is it an issue at this time? Well, I think Alderman Hayden made that clear in his statement because it's become a political thing. Well, Alderman Hayden sent us a note. I don't have a copy of it anymore, but if I remember the, the context of it, was basically that he was trying to keep it from becoming a political issue. And I think he's made it a political issue. I think he is, I, don't, I can't tell what his motives are, but it certainly looks like he's trying to eliminate a major plank from one of his opposition. And I don't think that looks good. And I don't think that we have to do something just because an alderman says he wants to change something. I don't think that's enough motive. I, I, I didn't follow you on the I don't think that that's enough of a reason to change something. I haven't heard anything from any of the, the uh, people in the city saying we should do away with it. I just don't know where it came from. But if, if they want to make a political issue, I mean, that's, they're allowed to run on that. But I think by trying to trump them and take away one of their political trump cards, it looks as if it may not be sincere. I uh, share a couple concerns. First of all, um, and Alderman Hayden did send me those emails, and I was on vacation for one week, um, and I did finally get back with Joe and, 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 and answer him. Um, I, I think that one of my concerns is, first of all, I have asked Mike Flynn, our city attorney, uh, the legal question, and, and Mike has, as of this morning, is still had not, he, he's had a lot on his plate, uh, had a chance to, to research it thoroughly. Because there are some questions about, you know, uh, legality. I, I think we, we know, we believe that, you know, it possibly can be done, but this changes our form of government, as mentioned well ago. We have had this form of government, in, to my knowledge, since really the beginning. And, and uh, so it is a major change to the government. I, I agree, Jerry and I had a brief comment, conversation in Linda, one of my fears to rushing and putting this on the ballot before we do, do the legal research, I've also called, and he happened to be on vacation, but I'm trying to get an opinion of our auditor. Because I think, you know, the checks and balances, Mr. Lenny mentioned a while ago, is something that we talked about. Um, right now, the people who balance the checkbook are not the same people who write the checks, correct? And, and um, if you put all this hypothetically under the finance director's leadership, then you have the same people responsible for writing the checks and balancing the checkbook. So I have questions for the auditor. I think we should all have questions for the auditor. How a city of our size with, the, with a, a total of $120 million budget these days, and that's, that's up quite a bit, but with the, with the sewage treatment plant project right now, isn't that about correct, about $120 million? There's a lot of responsibilities, and checks and balances are probably more important now than ever. So I, I think that we need to have, and they need a little time, more than just a couple weeks, um, we need to hear a, a legal opinion. We need to hear a financial opinion from our auditor, I believe. And, and then I think we need to also not just talk in generalities before we ask to put something on a ballot, but, but Jerry's comment and question was, to me, well taken, who would do these jobs and what would it cost? I, I don't think the research has gone into that. 
because somebody has to be responsible on a management level for $9 million of income due the city. That's a lot of our general fund, our sewer fund and general fund. So I think that you know there's a lot of questions here. This is not something we can rush. Um, I don't know that it takes four years to come up with these answers. I think that might be a little bit extreme. But I don't know that we can do it in four to six weeks. And I, I do respectfully disagree with Alderman Hayden about the, the public hearing. I think before any vote to put something on a referendum, the, the city council is obligated to hear all the, all the evidence before we put it out to the public. Because if, if you know, we have these hearings, and we have public hearings, and we get our fact statements back from our attorney and from our auditor, and we do our homework, and we, and we try to see where, how might we, if this was to change, how might the city council want to adapt this job, these job duties? Who's going to do them? How much is it going to cost? This day and age, I believe, if you put a referendum out there about eliminating position, in the climate of government today, in the media the way it is, I believe people will say, sure, get rid of it, especially if it's a hint that you're going to save money, which I think is a falsehood. At least at this point, I do, because I don't think there's any proven evidence that we're going to save any money. Um, I would certainly like to see that documentation. But I think if we put that out there, we're indicating to the public, we're challenging them to make a choice, and they're very uninformed at this point. And this could be dangerous. They could eliminate a position that we could go into something that right now is working the checks and balances. And I also agree with Mr. Turner. Now, as a mayor, I could say, well, I'm all for this. I'd have another pointed position. I disagree. Unless some evidence comes forward, unbelievably clear, but I haven't seen it yet, I think the checks and balances are very important that that position stay elected, that, is, and he, he's 100% correct, while we get along extremely well, we both respect each other's offices and responsibilities. Uh, I don't meddle in his office and tell him what to do. And if people do come to me thinking that the mayor has the final say, I simply say, you know, I'm not Mr. Turner's boss. He's an elected official, and that decision lies in his office with him. Uh, and that's the way I respond to him all these years, almost for eight years now. So. I think that you know there's a lot more needs to go into this before we would dare just say let's put it on a ballot for a referendum. I think we have we have the duty if this is truly interest of interest to do this to seek opinions and facts and hold public hearings so that the council could get the full full feel for the public before we would just vote to put something on a ballot and take a chance that uh, it, you know and it could be misrepresented how the vote would go. You know, and I'll just eliminate it. You know, let's get rid of this. Let's, 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 let's reduce government and, and save some money. That could be the farthest thing from the truth in this particular instance. And, and so I, I think we going slow here is not that I'm trying to obstruct Joe's request. It's not to say that I'm concurring with anyone. I happen to believe that the system right now really isn't broken, but we certainly have a right to evaluate it and explore it but I think it needs to be done cautiously and carefully uh, in the full openness of the public. And I think uh, public hearings, so therefore, and Joe, I apologize, I was gone the one week when you tried to get a hold of me or you tried to email me again and we finally got together on responding how I thought this should go forward. But I, and we did have it on the special, just so we clarify, it was on the agenda for the special ordinance meeting in July but you couldn't make it that right? You had a copy, but we, I did get it on the agenda and then we advertised it. So it wasn't like I held it off till August. You couldn't make it that night and really no one else here was prepared or interested in carrying the dialogue. So it kind of died in conversation that night and agreed to put it back on the August agenda. So that's a little bit of history as to, I didn't just drag my feet with this. Um, but I do think it, it's too premature to put it on the ballot. I will. And I do get a right to vote tonight, and I'm here for this entire meeting, and I will vote to, to not send it to a, a referendum at this time, because I don't think we're ready, and I think if there's interest in, if there's interest by Joe, or if there's interest by Dean and, and by Phil to truly research this, then I think they owe it to the council to bring some facts from the legal opinions, from the, from the auditors, 
about checks and balances, and I think they deserve to really tell us and show us how would they really restructure this office to save money before we put it to the public. Thank you. Anyone else? Sure. Jerry. Jerry? And then I, I saw you. The question was asked, why at this time is the question of the treasurer's office before us? On two occasions in the Bevel News Democrat, I've characterized it as a skillful political maneuver in the climate that prevails in this country. And also, that as skillful as that might be politically, it is not in the best interest of the city of Belleville. And I want to add, Mr. Chairman, I, I, I agree with that. And I, I disagree uh, with all of them. So I, uh, my sincerity is not uh, uh, at all uh, should be questioned in, in, in regards to, to this. Uh, I, I strongly believe, and, and again, I concur with, with, with Mr. Turner, and I, and I understand the points that you're, you're making there, but this is being used as a platform and, and plank. And as, as much as you've put out there, Mayor, that, that, that the public isn't educated or confused, it becomes, as you said, a, a gambit to where the public may look at this candidate as, well, this is the candidate that's going to eliminate the treasurer's position. So if I'm for that, and, and as you say, the public and its sentiment right now is for eliminating that, then that candidate basically is using that platform plank as a means to get in office with the very statements that you said, that, that there's not been much discussion on the merits or non-merits. And that's why I propose doing three public hearings between now and, and the election time to educate the public. As far as public hearings go, we didn't have one on, on the uh, aggregation vote though, last night. So I, I don't know if that's a precedent or a requirement. I think to eliminate change our form of government, it is a requirement according to Mike Flynn. And he hasn't researched this thoroughly, but I did ask him he felt that a public hearing was a necessity when you're eliminating a position that we've had for almost 200 years. But not before the vote. I mean, we could have a multitude of public hearings. I, I disagree. I think we should have the facts before we vote. Okay, I agree with you that we need to hear from the attorney. But I heard you say he hasn't done it yet, and then you said he's given you a partial answer. Well, he did give me a partial answer that he does think we would need a public hearing to eliminate this position. I okay, I'm, I'm frustrated though that this council asked, or this committee asked over a month ago for clarification from him or guidance from him, and I don't feel I'm as busy as a reasonable answer, and I'm frustrated with you as, I guess, his supervisor as a department head for letting this slide one more month. I think that's also a political you have you have your right to be frustrated as I am many times with with, with certain people. Okay, but we've asked for an attorney to be present at this meeting multiple times. We have not just one city attorney, but a company as a backup. And yet, this things that this committee asked for specifically, we're told wait, wait, wait. I don't think that's a reasonable answer. You know, I was the one. Uh, and, and we talked about and I mentioned about the legal opinion and I talked to Mike Flynn and he is began his research it's not complete um, and, and he told me late today that he wouldn't you know have a, a written opinion by tonight he apologized but he just you know wasn't gonna happen uh, he's been in trial several days since we met last for the city uh, many many different things so I mean it's um, you know, we need to get, 
you know, legal opinions take time. You don't go to a lawyer and, and rush your lawyer and have an opinion in a matter of a day or two. And, and uh, We're not talking about maybe, it. Maybe I, maybe I could have put more pressure on him or a timeline, but, but like I said, he, uh, you know, it, it wasn't ready for tonight. So I do think we need to hear from the attorney uh, and, and double check everything to make sure that we don't step out of bounds before we change something that's been a, a form of our government for, like I said, since the really beginning of our charter. Can that be done by August 20th, City Council meeting? He, he didn't, I didn't ask, I, I, I assume, well, he's close to having it, but I didn't have it today. And is there anyone else in that firm qualified to do this research? I didn't ask that question. He, he's the lead person I talked to, that we talked to, and uh, I run it through Mr. Flynn. He wants to delegate the research to one of his assistants, and that's his business. That would be like me telling a department head who to delegate things to. I don't tell the police chief who I want to research a question I have. I, no, I but do you let them continuously say, wait, I haven't had time? No, but I, I think there's a, you know, it's, it's, been, it's been an extremely busy couple weeks around here. Extremely busy. Um, and, and I think, in, in all respect, uh, you know, things do take some time. And, and there have been vacations and, you know, different things the last couple months where people have been, had the right to take off a week or so. And, you know, it's, it's, it's been, since this was brought up, of a, 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 a busy summer. Again, that's why there's a pattern as a backup. I can't believe the whole firm took the same week off. And I appreciate calling the auditor, although I don't... You, you think there's something wrong with checking that? No, no, no. I, I'm just not sure. You know, his is obviously not a legal opinion. Just no. maybe he can tell you what his experience but, is. But I, I, think I, would, I think I would be concerned. My question is to make sure that we don't do something, or if that was done, that what would be the recommendation to make sure that we were following what checks and balances? Because right now there's checks and balances in place. If, as I said, if they were to go under the same department in a structure form, as mentioned in the paper by some, uh, falling under the uh, finance director as a, another assistant, and it was mentioned by uh, Alderman Elmore, maybe someone in the department can take that job or acquire that job. I want to make sure the auditor, too, from a financial person's point of view, um, gives us the direction of the opinion that the checks and balances we could be potentially changing to are legal from his point of view and appropriate. They're going to be, he conducts audits all the time on municipalities. And I, I think that's a valid question. Okay, but again, the auditor sends us within his narrative at least a half a dozen times. It says we don't follow standard accounting practices now. So I'm not sure how much weight that holds. But we're not following the rules to begin with. We're also not following our own ordinances about you know, centralized purchasing. I've asked multiple times when we're going to get caught up and move towards that, and I just keep getting excuse after excuse after excuse. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Dave, I just would like to point out for the record the lack of attendance of the public tonight, although this was in the paper on several occasions, and it's on the website of the BND. There was such a push from the public that it has been spoken about on that scene. I think we're generating a problem that doesn't exist. Any other comments? But if we, if this doesn't move on tonight, we're going to be running short on time. And any other time, all we ever hear is, we gotta do it right away. We gotta do it right away, we're on the last hour. So, I mean, if we don't, then this is gonna be put off and then it'll be too late. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to ask if Mr. Hart, who has been part of the one proposal, has any comment about what they plan to do with this position to enlighten us. Maybe, I don't know, do you have anything to share with us, Alderman Hart? With regards to just well, eliminating the eliminated position. Well, the, 
our position is that we can eliminate the position, thus save money, by, as, as mentioned, promoting an individual inside the city of in this, in the current sewer trash department to take over the sewer trash collections and then hiring a new entry level position whereby that is where the, some of the savings, that's where the savings will be coming in with that elimination of the treasurer's position. So, so is the person who you propose to supervise going to be a union person? They would be, we, again, without having had the opportunity to explore ourselves, this is where this would be done after being elected into the position. I'm sure that Mr. Turner would not entertain me for any period of time to learn what can and cannot be done. But just as Mr. Turner was a new individual elected to the position, I would then, all, I too would be newly elected to the position <coughs> by learning what can and cannot be done. I feel that the ability is there to proceed with this. But therefore, by what if, what if in your learning you find out it can't be eliminated? And as stated in the paper, Ms. Alderman Elmore's position in mind is we are going to explore the possibility of eliminating the treasure. So position. all the more reason I do agree with Alderman Hayden here, this has become a political um, campaign to really, the, the public, you know, I think it was very, very weakly stated until I caught it the other day that you, Alderman Elmore, admitted in one sentence that well, maybe, you, maybe you'll find that you can't do it. But the premise of what you're running on is that you're going to be the last treasurer for the city of Elba. And I think that says, sets the tone that we're going to deliver something, and yet you've never spent one hour in the treasurer's office. And I, I find that very... Has Mr. Turner, has Mr. Turner spent one hour in the treasurer's office before his election? He did with Mr. Levy when he looked, when, Mr., when, when Eric Kern asked him to consider the job, he went down there uh, and, and spent some time with Mr. Lundy and studied it and looked at it before he considered it. Yes, is that not true? Again, I was not familiar. So well, I think, you know, you know, have you ever had a conversation with Mr. Turner? During committee meetings, some, yes. Not necessarily about the position. Well, I'm saying about his responsibility. You're, you're running on a platform, and we're here tonight having a large discussion, and Joe wants a public hearing on this, and yet we, we and, and Alderman Martins made a good point. Mr. Hankberg's here at all meetings, and Mr. White, and we appreciate that. And, and Mr. Lundy came because he heard about it, and he was a previous treasurer and has a vested interest of, of 12 years of his life in this position. But other than that, no one else has come from the public in, in concern or outcry. But you guys have led on that this is one of your major things, that you're going to eliminate this position, and yet, you haven't even sat down and had an hour-long conversation with our current treasurer of eight years as to what he does. Only because there's already clear-cut evidence of the fact that it is possible to do in other municipalities that has occurred already in municipalities in the state of Illinois. Well, I'd like to know which municipality that has our, has our population, has a police and fire department of our size, pension funds, has a sewer collection of our size, and has sanitation with all those, and a city cemetery, and probably some other things I'm missing, Mike and Jerry, that has those ex, ex, equal type things, and, and, how, and how they've eliminated it, or who's, who's taken that and what expense it's been. Because I'm, I'm really confused how we would put that into a general supervisor's job and duties uh, for $9 million of accountability. Somebody's gotta be there, and it's not gonna be a union position, in my opinion, that's going to be accountable for, for that collections of $9 million of revenue, which is extremely important to our total $120 million budget. Which again is another reason for not putting this on the November ballot to let the voters make that decision at this time, but yet to give us an opportunity over the period of my last, of the last term to make and, and entertain and explore those decisions. I have made that. But that's the idea. Either one can say they're going to run on it, but yet the other one wants to put it on the ballot and let the people decide, and you don't want to do that. 
So, and it's stated here in the paper, if you guys want to read, you want to read what you were talking about on, um, Elmore and Hart said the city isn't ready to make such a serious decision now, whether by a council vote or referendum. The reason they're campaigning for the position they believe should be eliminated is because the city will need about four years transition. So they're saying they're going, it's double talk. You're saying you're going to eliminate it, but yet you say it's going to take four years to do it. So, I mean, it's false hope for the people because you're not guaranteeing them. You're giving them a hope and think, oh, we're going to get rid of this position. Well, if that's your idea, put it on the ballot and let the people decide. You've started it, so let's finish it right. And we have never once said that we would not allow the voters to make that decision. Well, then it should be on the November ballot so it comes up for the April election. But yeah, you're going to rush the, the process that would put for, us in a position where an after, an after the election in November, if the voters decide to eliminate the city treasurer's position, only gives the administration four months to make the necessary changes because after April but or after May, there will no longer be as treasurer to f fulfill those duties, and so therefore you're only going to give the administration the four talking, five months to make that change. To, but the way you're talking, you're saying you're going to eliminate it within four years. That's another thing as the mayor was saying. At this time of the way the people are thinking with voting and that, oh, we're voting for that because they're going to eliminate this treasurer's position. And it's right here in black and white. And I don't feel, Mr. Chairman, that we should be putting anything in front of the public for a referendum until we have an explanation to educate the public how we might handle those duties and what it's going to cost and how it works out. Um, I, I think it's very clear, Mr. Hart, I think you've answered some of my questions tonight. You guys are not prepared by any means. You, you need to run for treasurer on the basis of your merit because regardless, you're going to have to run that office if you were so fortunate to be uh, on, your, on your behalf uh, to be elected. The public's going to need somebody to run that office with, uh, to understand and run it sincerely, even if it is your attempt at this point or your intent at this point to try to eliminate the position, which I think is questionable now listening to you and Mr. Elmore. I just think this is too quick. I agree with you, Alderman Hayden. This has become a political. No, I, and I want to. I, I don't want to add, Mr. Chairman. The, the the original statement that was made by Mr. Elmore in his announcement <coughs> in back in June was not a referendum that would be done by a council vote. And I don't believe. And I'm going to go back to to what I stated at the beginning. We're talking about three different referendums. You know. If, if any one of them should not be by a council vote, it should be the elimination of a city treasurer position. I agree, and that's why I said earlier, this is a charter, part of our charter, how we structured our government. This is the one topic. We could have, we could have chosen to make a decision on gaming, but after we saw the number of people on both sides of the aisle that had concerns, we, I recommended, you agreed, the majority agreed, to take it to the voters. This one here, um, you know, I think it's a must. Um, I think that's a must that it has to go, but I, I'm against taking it to the voters until we have done our research and we have some answers because I think otherwise, and I, and I have to agree with Alderman Schneider right now, we will be misleading the voters if we put a referendum out there without some answers. Because we're gonna, it's this day and age, anybody will vote if you give them the, you give them the premise that we're gonna eliminate something and save money and get rid of shrink government. And, and we gotta be careful, as Mr. Turner said in the very first article, be careful what you wish for. But how are you gonna change people's mind when this has already been in there? So everybody has to stand up and fight for themselves. Well, so I, if we don't put this on, I think if we the don't voters, get this on the ballot. Well, I think it's the it, voters' responsibility when, when the candidates go to the, go to the election to question them what their platform really is and get to the truth. The chairman, I do have a response. You, you made a statement, Mr. Mayor, and I do believe I'm qualified for the position. That's what it's for. But yet you, you made the window that I, I do not. I'm I always simply writing on the platform that I'm eliminating Okay, let's position. not call names. We've had enough of that going on. He's not. 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 Can I ask for a clarification? Is your position still that we should 
hold a public hearing at this time, or what are you thinking? L legally, <clears throat> legally, a public hearing takes 15 days. Right, you to have to give the notification. Sure. Okay. In my opinion, um, if we posted the public hearing today, we got we, the council has to vote to get a resolution to the county to get on the ballot in November by the 20th, which is Monday night at midnight, a vote has to be taken. That's the law. And I, you know, and, and we didn't start on all this until really, you know, just weeks ago. So it's not that, you know, I, I didn't know all, I didn't have all these facts on the tip of my tongue, okay? We had to do a little research. Linda called the county on two occasions to clarify some things. We really can't even truly, legally, advertise a public meeting and get it done before, the, before okay. Monday night. No way. Your Honor. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this is Ken Kinsella. I personally think that we are at a tempest in a teapot here. We don't have interest from the, the people outside. I don't see any, nobody's called me and said eliminate it. And if somebody wants to put it as part of their campaign, that's, they're allowed to do that. And we'll campaign also. That's fine. But I don't see that anybody's proven why we should even consider putting it on a ballot. I mean, if, if it comes to a decision, I might agree to put it on a ballot, but I don't see that we have any reason to change things right now. Just as Alderman Martinson said, you know, we haven't heard a groundswell of people who are upset with what's going on now. Any further comments? Okay, uh, we have a Subject to discuss, and is there a motion? Without a motion, this will not be on the city council agenda. Is that correct? That would be correct. Or the motion dies here. If it ties, it goes to the council. If without a motion, we wouldn't put on the agenda. Well, can the committee not bring a report without a recommendation? What, what do you want to vote at the council level? Oh, no, I just would like a, dis a, a further discussion. Well, I'm sure you will. I mean, under this latest new business, I'm sure we'll discuss it, if you want. And I mean, that's fine, there'll be more people there, maybe. <clears throat> but, but my point is, you know, I, I think several good points have been made tonight. There's no public outcry. There's not been nearly enough research done. By the questions I asked Alderman Hart, they are just at the very beginning of exploring what they might do with this position. They don't have all the answers ready to go. And I, I think really and truthfully at this time, to push for much more discussion and, and, and take time with any of us, it's too premature. There's not enough interest, or is there enough, uh, uh, you know, and it's gonna be, if it's gonna be a campaign issue, let it be a campaign issue. Uh, I, you know, like I said, I think they're gonna have to explain to the public why they're running on this platform and what they're, what they're, because it come across pretty strong at first that they were gonna limit, be the last treasure. And, and now we hear, uh, well, you know, we're gonna review it when we get in there. Um, I think that's a little bit different dialogue than what I heard. Now, if he was gonna say, if they were gonna run and say, I'm gonna be the last treasure and I promise you I will not accept an appointment, I will not do a second term, I will not, you know, and you had all that, you know, and if somebody really had that type of a, uh, of a campaign, and you know, I'm not seeking further election. Okay, and, but we're getting too far down. I know, but I'm saying this is plenty, I think he's gonna have to run his campaign, Joe and I are gonna have to run our campaign, and, and I think right now there's no there's no public outcry here for us, in my opinion, to take this any further. Okay, well, so let me ask you then about the city attorney. We can still ask the city okay. attorney. Yeah, to that's what I'm saying. If, if I would like to still hear what his research results were. I, I, we can do that, but I'll have to be honest with you, one of the things he had said to me was, before I spend countless hours on all this, where do you think it's going? I said, until we have the committee meeting, because Joe could make the last one, I'm not sure, I wasn't sure originally if Joe was for it or against it, or just for giving it the public a chance. But what I'm against is, is taking it to the public before they have all the facts. Because I think that could be dangerous, and we could end up getting a public vote on something that they are totally unprepared to vote on. I don't disagree, yeah. and, and, so, and that's why I would like to hear these. So questions. I think in a reasonable period of time, I will ask the city attorney, if he can't do it by Monday, I will try to have it for sure by the first meeting of September. We'll have his rendering to all of you maybe before then, and you can read it. I have talked to the, or called the auditor. 
I have not talked to him personally, but I called the auditor and asked him to get back with me so that we could maybe have a little discussion uh, about, you know, if he has any opinion at all. But I, I think we need to ask. He's been auditing our books for a number of years and he does municipal books, and I think, I think we ought to have the courtesy and the sense to ask him as well. But, but I think then it's, it's, you know, if the public drives that topic, then I think we bring it back to the table. But then it's too late to get it on the ballot for November. But, but if we're really but sincere, if we're, real, if we're really sincere about it, if we're really sincere about it, and we really think there's some real value to this, then put it on the April ballot as well as him running, and, and you know they can say it's going to have to be after the end of his term that it's going to be eliminated or something. But I think you know. Let's get all the facts and let's see where the, I, I just think at this point in time, I don't see eliminating this position doing anything but causing more grief for the city. I think it's going to be a lot more cumbersome, uh, you know, and, and it's going to, it is going to put more under the mayor's office, which whether I'm mayor or not, I, I don't believe that's the right place for the treasurer's office to go. And if you add another person, another, another set of responsibilities on the mayor's duties, um, you know, to be responsible for that nine million dollars of collection on top of everything else he's responsible for, you're adding more to the mayor. So you probably gonna have to be prepared to raise the mayor's salary as well, because you're you're going to put a whole other uh, set of responsibilities that was the treasurer's responsibilities also on the mayor's, and then ultimately on the finance director, and then on maybe a fine, assistant finance director or whatever you title it, manager of whatever that position is going to be down there, and ultimately it's going to have some. Uh, there's going to be a price tag. Now, can you save a few bucks? Who knows? But it's not going to be very, not going to be nothing gigantic. And I don't think it's going to have the checks and balances are being near as well structured as it's been for almost the last 200 years. I would like to make a motion. My, my motion would be, I move that we recommend that the elimination of the treasurer's position not be put on the November 15th ballot. We recommend that to the council. November 6th, excuse me. November 6th, and not, not, not on the November ballot. Thank you. Okay, would you restate that? I would recommend, uh, I move that, that this committee recommends that the elimination of the treasurer's position not be put on the November ballot. Okay, so will that recommendation? Then we'll go to council. Are you yes. Going? You want okay. to go to council? Okay. That's okay. That's I'll fine. I'll second that motion. Okay. Now we have a motion and a just second. Ready for discussion? More? We're ready to vote. Roll call. Okay. Clarify what yes and no one is. Yes means that we are going, we're recommending to the council you don't that this, raise your voice at me. I'm just talking through the microphone, that's all. Yes means that we are telling the council that we recommend that it not go on the ballot. No means we're not taking any action and somebody can make a different motion. Okay, I would like to make a motion that we put We've got to vote on this one first. Okay, we got a motion and a second. All those in favor? I asked for a roll call, Mr. Chairman. Oh, yes. Thank you. Uh, we're going to have a roll call vote. Uh, Melinda Holt? Aye. Ken Kinsella? Aye. Dave Martinson? Aye. Lillian Schneider? No. And the chair votes aye. Mr. Chairman, I note that the mayor also votes aye, and I have a Opportunity to vote here. Okay. That's five yeses, one no. Motion passes. Okay, now you look. I want to thank you, Mr. Chairman, for allowing the uh, time and discussion. Okay, what about? Is there any other? Uh, we have a section here for miscellaneous. Any business discussion or comments? Any other members? Nothing, nothing heard. Nothing heard. We call for someone to make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. <laughs> a motion to adjourn is second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Close. Good. At uh, 701.